baller, budget, baller, budget, baller, budget, baller. What kind of mountain bike do you get for the money these days? There's been a lot of discussion and talk and reviews about the highest end build, but what about the workhorse build? Will riders have just as much fun on something like this? Over the past many months, we logged innumerable miles on both the Stump Jumper S-Works at $9,800 and the Stump Jumper Comp Alloy at $3,400. We're ready to share how each of them fared and where you should put your money. It's crazy how different these bikes are, not only on paper, but on the trail, even though they are stump jumpers. So when it came to going downhill on the bikes, was there a clear winner? Overall, the S-Works was definitely faster in every condition, but the comp alloy on wide open trails held itself very well. It's quite stable. A little bit longer wheelbase was noticeable as well as the extra weight. That was nice. While the S-Works, it's so light. Some of the POV we were looking at, you can see the bike just flipping back and forth. It's, it almost looks fake. You can flick it around so easily. It's a bit shorter. Um, and I was shocked to see that in the geometry charts, just how much shorter it was than this one in the rear end. It was noticeable and I liked it. Like, is there a point to which the shorter snappiness and the lightweight of that is a detriment versus the comp? They reached the same point in speed on those wide open trails, but differently. Okay. So if you're confident on this, you can go just as fast but it feels fast. While this one, you're gonna get to that point and you're gonna be pretty comfortable, but then you're just gonna overwhelm the suspension at that point. Okay. And it just, there is a clear line with it. Did the alloy comp feel like a tank when you were on trail or did it wear its weight well? <laughs> Comparatively, <laughs> it felt like a tank. This thing weighs almost nothing, but overall going from different bikes to this, it felt fine. Climbing wise, how did they each get up the hill? The comp alloy was something that I was comfortable just kind of cruising with, talking with my friends and enjoying it. While the S-Works, I could do that, but there are times where I wanted to kind of get after it. Like it put you more in like race competitor mode almost? I mean, I'm competitive and I kind of just, once I start picking it up and I start closing gaps with people and you know, I, I get pumped. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I kind of got after it on this one. Definitely more than this one. I had no qualms with the geometry in either. I don't want this to be different because it's short, it's snappy, it's intuitive feels great, while this one, you know, it's comfortable. And I enjoyed that. This seat tube is a bit slacker than this one. So as it got steeper, some of the trails locally are very steep, kind of obnoxiously steep. Um, and this one just kind of trundled on up and they both have tons of traction, but this one was just like more relaxed doing it. In Every condition I could climb things, but you know, just because it's a little bit shorter and a little bit slacker here in the seat tube angle, I just had to I had to slide forward quite a bit more. In those extreme conditions, you know, most people probably wouldn't subject themselves to that. The suspension is done differently, but it feels so similar that again, it was hard to differentiate the two in those respects. Huh, like, so you, the FSR versus flex day wasn't drastic or super obvious? No, not really. The thing that was different was the shock itself. That was huge, actually. The greater adjustability on this one, allowing myself to add compression, was really important, and that elevated this bike on both the climbs and on the descent. Well, this one, I couldn't do that. They don't actually talk about the compression tune on this one. 
they focus on this one because they have a unique rebound tune on this guy, which they talk extensively about being progressive as, a, as opposed to digressive, and I'll get to that in the article. Um, well, this one, on the other hand, uh, I actually looked for information on that, and I couldn't find it. Both of these linkages are fairly linear. I mean, they, they increase progressivity over previous years, but it's still, this generation is at about 19, I think it's 19 percent. I ended up having to put a larger volume reducer in, so from 0.6 up to 0.8. I still kept it at 25 percent sag, which is what Specialized recommends for both. For this one, I started at a lower end of the compression, and it felt really good there at the top as I was pedaling, but I noticed it was just kind of blowing through right afterward. And after I did a little more studying, it turns out that it, the low speed compression is higher at sag and drops off as you progress through the travel. So with that in mind, I started clicking it through, and there's three positions, and I ended up on the third and it felt very firm while pedaling. It was really nice, actually. I wasn't getting that blow through sensation that I was feeling previously, so I was able to actually hold composure through G out turns, which we have a lot of around here. So I couldn't do that with this one, unfortunately. So that was one of the major limiting factors for me on this bike at the higher speeds, because, you know, even though I added that progressivity and ran 25% sag, it was still just not quite as composed as I would like. And so many people ask me about, you know, bumping up, up to 150 or putting a Lyric or a Fox 36 on this thing. I wouldn't do that on either one because this bike is not designed for that sort of intention. This rear suspension, it's not tuned. It's not, it doesn't have a little dingus. <laughs> it's completely dingusless. <laughs> you know, there's nothing there. <laughs> there's no oil at all. It's small, it's made to be light. Um, so if you try and bump up that front and beef up the front end, you're gonna overwhelm the rear. It's gotta be balanced with this thing. And I, I appreciate how Specialized has made these distinct categories and there's, there's no overlap. You know, you've got a 34, which is gonna match this little tiny shock with these smaller brakes, making a lightweight bike. This one, on the other hand, you just need to accept that it's gonna be slower in the climbs and it's gonna have a ceiling on the descent, but overall, it does its job admirably. The Fox 34 was really stiff at first. It was super damped, especially for my lightweight. So I had, took, some, took some thought into it and started playing around with volume reducers and ended up taking them all out, adding a bunch of pressure, then result, which resulted in a higher ride height, and I could dial in the compression a little bit more. It feels really good now. So uh, this one, on the other hand, felt really good right out of the box. I didn't have to pull any volume reducers or anything. Ride height was fine, but it's generally less stamped. So at the lower speeds, casual riding, it felt great, actually. At first, I preferred this one, but as speeds progressed, it was really hard to get it tuned for those higher compressions just because it's harder to tune it. It was just hard to get it balanced and comfortable. And I found myself blowing through the travel as speeds increased. And as I increased compression, it got firm very fast. So I prefer the grip too, but you know, I had nothing fundamentally wrong with this one though. It worked pretty well, especially for workhorse bike. <laughs> Shifting experience. Couldn't be more different. <laughs> we got electronic 
very intuitive, extremely easy shifting on this bike. It did its thing. I don't even know what to say about it. It was just so flawless. I loved the feel, but overall, I just never had to think about it. Barely just graze it. <laughs> like my shifting technique completely changed uh, with this. So going back to something with a mechanical setup was not worse per se, but it was something I had to almost relearn. This is, you know, something I do all the time. I never had to adjust it other than charge it. That's about it. I never had to dag the rear, uh, rear hanger. Not once. The chain's fine. I, it comes with a 30 tooth front ring. I like it for the most part. I tried it with a 34. I used a 36. All of them are fun. Depends on what your intention is. Um, but for a bike like this, you know, something that you're gonna take into the back country, 30 tooth is great. While the comp alloy had a tendency of not shifting. I found that out the hard way <laughs> on a descent, <laughs> but it's a warranty issue. So on a bike like this, I would really like to see something better, GX. I think GX is a, a workhorse, especially for this price. I think that would be legit. That would really round out this bike. It's just, it's a weak point, and I'd love to see them just notch that up. Eww. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, it's essentially due to a neglect. These wheels have been hammered. Both of them have actually been hammered. I never touched these, either of them, really. Um, this one's not very round, not very straight. And yeah, one of the spokes came uh, completely undone slash unthreaded here at the nipple. So there's a nipple just kind of wandering around in the rim. I don't see any spoke prep on it. So that's something that you would kind of expect and uh, it would be, you know, an easy addition to their wheel builds. If you were a proper owner doing basic maintenance, it's gonna fare better. The carbon wheel, this Revolve carbon wheel, if you're just not into working on wheels, then you're gonna be fine. <laughs> We've had this wheel, this carbon wheel for months and I have ridden it super hard, uh, way beyond this bike's intention and I, I've never touched a nipple on it. No adjustment at all. There are definitely a lot of dings on both front and rear on the alloy wheels. The Rear one is not very round anymore at all. At this point, I wouldn't even try fixing this wheel. I would just lace up a new one. But that's just the nature of aluminum wheels. I love the ride quality of these wheels, actually. Alloy wheels are very comfortable. Yeah, so as far as the frames go, both of them are bond proof. I didn't have to deal with anything out of the ordinary. No loose pivots, no loose bolts. Uh, no cracks, no nothing. The only thing I did do was wrap the S-Works frame. It started to look pretty haggard. Actually, I fell from the stratosphere <laughs> 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 and <laughs> broke my scapula on this bike on a pretty big jump. And the only thing I had to do afterward was just straighten the stem. It was another instance where I took it to the shop and put it in the stand and just kind of stared at it, expecting to see something that I'd need to fix or replace. And I didn't. It was crazy. So what you're telling us is that the bike did not break, but you did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I thought my like gelatinous soft body would have <laughs> survived, but no, it was this like little bike <laughs> that's not gelatinous at all. <laughs> Do you feel that at 9,800 bucks that S-Works is worth its price to performance? No. <laughs> We're able to piece together an expert build with carbon wheels. GX axis and still have the experts 
mechanical drivetrain and wheel set, and it would still be less by a lot. So availability aside, there are options that, you know, you could get the same performance and still ride really fast and have fun. At $3,400, do you think that bike is worth its, its value? Is the value of performance there? Not quite. I'd like to see a better drivetrain. The wheels suffered, but again, that was just neglect. If there was a weakness, it's the drivetrain for sure. And if they improve that, then I would wholeheartedly say that this is, you know, a well-rounded killer workhorse build. But as I see the bike, I really enjoyed it. We all really enjoyed it. It was great. It's stump jumper buying time. Which one are you going to get? Uh, well, you know, I ride every day fairly hard. I'm going to get the expert and just go from there. Yeah, those aren't available. Can I get this one? No, that's going back to Specialized. They need it. But, but I like this one. Yeah, no, you can have that one. Really? Yep. Are you kidding? <laughs> <sighs> Fine. I'll just go. Yep. See you later, Greg. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.